On this video, we're going to focus on creating uh, GUIs uh, in our project. So you'll recollect we've added our devices and tested them and added our macros and tested them. And now we're going to create some graphical user interfaces. Now, um, one, uh, one uh, really useful tip is that if you're not of a graphical artistic uh, orientation, um, save yourself a lot of time time by buying some off-the-shelf graphical templates um, if uh, you know if, uh, if you're like me uh, with an engineering background um, I you know I, I find it very hard to do graphically orientated type things I like nice straight lines and square edges um, and staring at a blank screen trying to be graphical and creative is very hard uh, yes, you can search the internet and look for lots of stuff on the internet, but um, then when you find that things are different sizes and you have to resize them in Photoshop and you spend ages looking for a particular button to match the other buttons you've got, you soon realize when you work out what your time costs um, that it's costing you a lot of money. Um, we have a number of templates that have been produced by third parties available uh, that you can browse on our website um, and utilize those templates and it just a saves you a lot of time and B uh, gives your project a far more professional feel than you could probably create yourself unless you are a graphics artistic uh, design person so I'm going to utilize um, one of the templates we have available uh, we have templates from custom code crafters here in the UK um, as well as uh, push uh, in Australia and uh, also um, uh, Blackman signature designs in the US uh, have all done templates geared towards uh, bitwise controls uh, I'm going to use the custom code crafters template so this is uh, credit to the uh, the guys there this is their Xenon template package uh, which um, is very nice so uh, when you buy that template package um, you basically get a GUI group that you can import so I'm gonna go to right click on GUIs and select import um, I've already navigated previously clearly to my my documents where I've got the uh, template package and uh, if I go back a level you can see you have projects both sized for iPad and and set up also for iPod um, so obviously you've got smaller screens so you've got a different screen layout there I'm gonna do an iPad project and even within that I get two types of projects a small and a large um, the basically the difference between them is multi-zone so the large one allows you to have zone selection you know what room are you in I'm in the lounge I'm in the kitchen or I'm in the bedroom that kind of stuff um, the small project uh, only allows you to have uh, a small number of zones so I've double clicked on the iPad small project um, there's a lot of graphics in here and a lot of uh, templated pages so it takes a couple of seconds to import it and now you'll see under GUI groups I've got this uh, this iPad project and if I open it up you can see I've got all these GUI pages the first half are all uh, have underscore P uh, at the end of their uh, various page names right down to here. These are all portrait pages. And then you've got the same thing again in landscape format because obviously the iPad has that unique capability of, of uh, reorientating itself depending on whether it's horizontal or vertical orientation. So let's just have a quick look at the sky or the satellite template because you've got templates here for all sorts of things. A satellite box, a DVD player, a DVR, a movie server, an iPod, you know, temperature control, curtain control, favorite channels on your sky box or your cable TV box, games console, keyboard, lighting control, radio, security, CCTV, plus um, a whole bunch of um, sort of uh, warning are you sure you want to shut down a wait page and and that kind of stuff um, and then you've got the whole thing repeated in landscape format so if we have a look at the satellite template in portrait format you'll see that um, you've got your main controls for a satellite box in the middle and at the top you've got uh, a power button you've got some quick navigation to go to different rooms a back button and at the bottom you've got volume mute and source selection the clock and that's consistent 
uh, regardless of what template you're using. They've always got, it's important from a usability point of view that you have that common kind of feel as you go from page to page. So you'll see my satellite box or my iPod control uh, all give me the same sort of buttons in the same locations and I've always got a transport in the middle. Um, if I look at the satellite landscape uh, template uh, then you'll see again common feel that I've got the controls in the middle but because I've got more screen space left and right it then jumps to have my zone navigation on the left rather than the top and my source is on the right rather than the bottom along with the volume uh, so as I rotate my iPad from horror from landscape to portrait it will jump from one screen to the other that is done under the GUI menu of the particular page under rotation so this is a landscape page so I'm already in landscape mode so on landscape do nothing because I'm already landscape but if I rotate to portrait then jump to the satellite portrait page and if I go to the satellite portrait page then on rotation to portrait do nothing I'm already on portrait but on landscape go to the satellite TV landscape page so all those jumps are already built into all these templates for you um, so that saves um, a lot of uh, a lot of work let's have a quick look at the welcome page the welcome page is going to be your home page which um, allows you to uh, which is where you start from Again, you've got your zone selection, then down the bottom you've got your source selection. And you'll notice there's, a, there's three little squares against each icon. The first square, if it's populated, would have a P in it, and that would mean there's a pressed action, that when you press that button, something's going to happen. The next square, if it's populated, would have an R in it, which, is, which means there's a released action, which means when you release the button, it'll do something. The last square has an N. The N indicates as a navigation, uh, and we have got an N in this case, which means a navigation has been programmed. By hovering over the button, it brings up this little pop-up menu, and it tells you what's going on. Pressed action, nothing. Released action, nothing. But there is a navigation, which is go to satellite TV portrait. So by pressing that button, it, already in the templates, those navigations are built in for me, which is um, very handy. So, for the sake of our project, I only have two sources. Um, I've got the satellite and the Blu-ray. Uh, sorry, I have a satellite and Apple TV, beg your pardon. Uh, of course, I can change these icons by double-clicking. I can change and, and navigate around, and I've got lots of uh, icons that I can uh, choose from uh, within my template package. Um, so, you know, with these template packages, you kind of never need to search the internet looking for icons or um, uh, looking for or, or photoshopping icons because you've got loads of them available uh, but for the purposes of this exercise we're just going to very quickly configure these GUIs um, to be able to control our project um, I don't have any lighting, so I'm just going to delete the lighting and security so I can't offer my customer a button that doesn't do anything. Um, and it's a single zone, so I'm going to just delete these icons as well. Um, so that uh, and maybe I might put a logo up there or something up there that I might use that space for something else. That's all I want to do is control satellite and um, my Apple TV. Um, and I'm going to change where it says Blu-ray uh, to Apple TV so that um, it's clear what we're doing um, and my navigation goes to DVD and satellite so that's good to go let's have a look at my satellite uh, page uh, I'm gonna repeat the same functions there delete the stuff that I'm not using um, and change that to uh, Apple TV so I've got that consistency throughout now I've got all these buttons that need programming to be able to control my satellite box. I could open up my sky box and look at my IR codes and start dragging and dropping. So button one drops onto button one. And now you can see I have a P 
as a pressed action and if I hover over it you can see it says send pulsed key number one to Skybox. Um, that's quite time consuming, uh, bitwise have made your life a lot easier by simply being able to drag the Skybox from here in the project tree. I'm clicking and holding with the left mouse and dragging and dropping it onto the GUI and it says drop device to populate button actions. Um, I can't drop it on a particular, I have to drop it on the background for this to work and it pops up with an, a dialog box saying what do you want me to try and program for you. Uh, I'm going to want to program all so I hit all and hit OK. Now 28 buttons have been programmed for me. So you can see now all my buttons, my numbers have all been done, uh, my forward and play and pause and stop and my coloured and record buttons have all been done for me. If I hover over it you can see what each function is. It's done that because if I double click there's this thing called command tags. So the button knows it's a digit 5. It knows that's what it does. So if in the IR code bank there is a digit 5 in there, which there is, it'll assign it to that button, which is pretty powerful. Um, it's not perfect. Um, the TV guide button has got a command tag of guide, and in my IR code bank it says TV guide. So it didn't do that one. If I'd renamed that to say guide, then it would have done it for me. But I can just drag and drop that across. Um, I've got to do box office and interactive. Um, I need to do manually. Um, I probably want to rename that to be the sky button, maybe. Um, and I've got um, services and I've probably got a help button and I've got a text button there you go so I've programmed all my buttons now in order to uh, and of course you know once you've bought a temp the template package is very close to what you need uh, but as you saw I had to do some minor tweaks there of course now I can save this and this can become my company template package um, so that um, I don't have to do this every time those little minor tweaks I don't have to do every single time I create a new project. Okay, that's my sky page done. I'm happy with that. Hit OK. Um, I'm going to use the uh, DVD template for my Apple TV. It's near enough there. Uh, again, I think I'll just delete the um, navigation functions that I'm not using and rename this to be. Apple TV. I'm going to use the same trick for, for populating, uh, for pre-populating. Uh, just going to show you a different way of doing it. Going to grab the Apple TV and at this level I'm going to drag and drop it onto the actual GUI page within the project tree. Again it does the same thing. Uh, it's given me 16 buttons. Now I'm going to go in and have a look at it and see what it's done for me. So I've got um, successfully up and down and left and right and I've got the uh, select it's good um, and I've got the main home menu button if you're familiar with an Apple TV remote there's not a lot of buttons on it interestingly enough there are more IR codes in the code bank uh, with this with bitwise controls and there actually are on an Apple TV remote so you get more discrete functions like there isn't a fast forward and rewind and skip forward and skip back buttons on an actual Apple TV remote you give the customer more functionality uh, stop doesn't exist so we'll uh, we'll uh, we'll delete that one um, and um, perhaps we'll just uh, move these buttons over to uh, to fill up the gap um, so that we don't have uh, an unpleasant gap in the buttons there so Apple TVs don't have stop functions clearly um, just make sure it's nicely centered right there are lots of nice tools here I can center on page vertically horizontally I can evenly space buttons I can align there's all sorts of really helpful tools for making your graphics line up nicely um, and none of these buttons actually make sense for an Apple TV in this context so um, I'm just gonna use these buttons here okay that does what I need for an Apple TV 
So I'm going to hit OK. So I've programmed my home screen and I've programmed my satellite and my Apple TV screens. Um, and that works, um, that pretty well does what I need. <clears throat> If I want to do the landscape versions, I'll have to repeat that as well um, down here where I'd have to, there's only three pages I've customized, welcome, DVD and satellite. I'd have to repeat the same exercise for welcome, DVD and satellite, which is nice to do because then when you rotate the iPad, it makes full use of the screen. If you don't want to do that, you can disable that function so you can lock it to portrait permanently or landscape permanently for that matter. Um, some people have done some clever things where perhaps um, in portrait mode your satellite controls are there but when you go to landscape it gives you all your favorite channels yeah, with icons for BBC One and ITV and all those different sort of channel icons. Um, for the purpose of this video I'm just going to do the portrait versions. One thing I haven't done is obviously every single page has got volume commands. Volume up, down and mute. Um, and the volume is actually not going to be from the skybox or from the TV. It's going to be from my my Speakercraft CS3 um, under TV speaker. So now you think, oh my God, look at all these pages. I've got to I've got to edit the volume commands on every single page. Fortunately, Bitwise have thought about that as well because I can grab my my audio device, be it my surround sound amp, or in this case it's the CS3, and I can drop that on the GUI group. Now this time, all I want to do is volumes. That is going to go through and populate the volume up and the volume down and the mute key for every single page in my project. That's done 128 IR codes in one go. So let's go back and have a look at my satellite page, and you can see now I hover over volume down it says volume minus to CS3 speakercraft TV speaker and volume up and mute you'll notice that we have a green background for the volumes if I just double click what it's also done is it's ticked this box here which is repeat press action whilst held which is really useful because that means I haven't got to keep pressing the volume down button um, to make the volume ramp down I can just press and hold um, so it's done that for me as well uh, that's why it's got a green background to highlight that the uh, repeat whilst held tick box has been checked the uh, only other thing that I need to do now remember we created these macros because on my home page um, I'm navigating when I press satellite I jump to the satellite screen but I also want to run the macro go to sky to set up all my Geffen matrix switcher and make sure my TV is on the right input and stuff. So all I've got to do is drag, click on the macro, drag and drop. And you can now see I've got a P in the pressed action. And if I let it uh, bring the menu up, the dialog box up, I can see the pressed action says run macro number five, go to sky and then navigate to the satellite. Uh, so I'm going to likewise do the same for go to Apple TV. So my home screen now has that ability to navigate. But if you remember on my satellite screens, I can also, I don't force the user to go back to the home screen. I've got these quick navigations down here as well. So I'm going to just dump the go to sky and go to Apple TV macros on the satellite page and on the DVD page. Obviously by giving your customers lots of ways to navigate around you need to remember to um, put the uh, to put those things on to the various locations. Um, okay so now that I've done my navigations I'm pretty well good to go going to leave it there for this training video and I'll speak to you on the next one. Thank you.